What are my thoughts on Malaysian roads? I, I, I love them. I, uh, we have roads that stretches to, to nowhere. Take a look at the scenery here. We're on the uh, Rawang Bypass and uh, we're passing by at a very elevated height and you start to see the tops of trees which originate from the rainforest and they kind of look like cauliflower heads. Where else can you experience this? Look at that, that's just majestic. How does it compare with, say, roads from Singapore? I think Singapore's infrastructure and the way they build their roads is of a much higher quality. Uh, the roads aren't as bumpy, uh, they're very well kept, uh, they're clean. Singapore's a hygienic country, I, 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 I love what it is, but I'll bet you most of the drivers, the guys that we know in Singapore, especially the Malaysians working over there, they trade their left nut right now to come back to KL for a drive up to Uluyam, to have a coffee in Gunting, or to head all the way through our mountain roads directly to Thailand. That's how great our roads are. Beautiful, beautiful roads. Gotta love it. What are some of the fun and safe routes that we could drive around the Klang Valley? This is interesting. Uh, we've got so many routes, uh, but I could name you the two most popular roads. Uluyam, and that's, that's a route that we take almost religious weekly. Um, and, and that takes us from KL all the way up through to Pahang onto Genting Highlands, where we enjoy our cup of coffee in 18 degree weather. That's something we look forward to. The other road that we love is Kuala Kelawang. It's, uh, it's at least double the length of time to cross. Very rewarding, but it's also a very technical road. These are possibly and probably the two most popular roads for car enthusiasts in the Klang Valley. What's been my experience with the PKP and not being able to drive freely? Interesting question. Uh, I think for most of us who are petrol heads, uh, it's, been, it's been frustrating mostly uh, to not be able to start the engines and just take a long drive up to our usual spots. Um, coffee at Starbucks in Genting or, or anywhere else for that matter or to PD just to unwind uh, because of the intra or inter-district uh, restrictions um, but now that they've allowed travel within the district um, here we are today uh, taking one of my favorite routes um, in Uluyam and we're just going to go through mountainous passes our uh, most famous Tuge Road, per se. I miss this, the green, the green scenery, the fresh air. Completely change, a complete change of pace, if you will. One of the first things that hits you during a drive in Uluyam is that sharp smell of the air because it's far removed from the usual pollutants that we have right in the city and usually after a drive at Uluyam I feel very much recharged for the day. Have I missed being able to make spontaneous drives and uh, missing out on track days and gatherings? Uh, of course, yep. Uh, who wouldn't? Uh, from going for track days three to four times a year to pretty much none for the whole entire pandemic. That has been, that has been very tough. That has been really, really tough. But I think it's uh, something we're all adjusting to. And we hope with the uh, rollout of the vaccination programs that things will start to open up for most of us. What's been my previous track experience and uh, do I regularly track? Um, Probably up until about a year and a half ago, 
where uh, I had spent some time on track occasionally. Um, I'd estimate something almost on a quarterly basis. Track takes up a lot of time. There's a lot of prep work for the car before, uh, and it's usually something that we enjoy as a method to unwind or to, to set new lap times. But for a lot of us as well, uh, track days are days where we are testing out new mods to the cars, performance, performance upgrades to the cars, and uh, seeing how it behaves, ambient temperatures, um, setups for new wheels, tires, suspensions, brakes, exhaust systems. Uh, that's when we usually work our track days to its maximum benefit. So, I guess it varies from uh, people to people, but I do miss my track days. My absence for the period of time before the pandemic was mostly or largely due to the fact that uh, I've been planning and uh, I've been planning and preparing for some upgrades to my regular track car, which is the uh, Renault Megane RS250 that I have. And it's, it's nearing completion and uh, I'm excited to take it out on track again soon in the next few months. We'll see how that goes. Uh, a lot of time and love was spent to get that car perfect to my requirements. What happens when you don't drive your car for long periods of time? And uh, this is something a lot of people have experienced uh, during the pandemic, especially at the start of the pandemic where uh, the whole country was in full lockdown and we were all working from home. Um, and yes, in terms of uh, a car not being run in and optimized, this is something that uh, requires a little bit of care. Care in the sense that uh, one of the most basic things you can do to the car is to actually have a battery charging system because you want to ensure that the battery is trickle charged and uh, any of the memory effects uh, can be erased. The uh, more modern chargers like uh, C-Tech, they have these ability to um, erase memory effects and recondition the battery. And uh, we've been in the business for a bit over 17 years and we've seen the, the significant difference with a lot of our cars when uh, they're charged regularly with a C-Tech charger or any proper car charger of the sort, to be honest. Um, and for a lot of the aftermarket batteries, you'll notice uh, at times it lasts between a year or two and with batteries that are charged and conditioned regularly with, uh, say for example, a CTEC charger, um, the lifespan can sometimes increase and double up as well. So it's, uh, in my opinion, something crucial. That's important. And, uh, but relying completely on uh, a battery charger is also not the best uh, or most ideal situation. Um, the car needs to be running as well. So. Uh, when there's any opportunity, try to... We're talking specifically right now more towards a weekend car, right? So uh, one of the ideas that I could suggest is to run in the car, um, just for light errands, uh, go clear a uh, toll tunnel or two, uh, enjoy the car and have it washed and parked back in. Um, and basically, the car will maintain better. Another thing to note is also that um, it's important to move the car around a bit so that your tires don't have flat spots. Um, that's one of the dangers. When you have uh, flat spots, because the car is stagnant in one location, the tires don't do so well. So rotation is very important and uh, something crucial for the upkeep of the car. Then there are the car clubs that uh, are represented specifically by model. So you have the uh, A45 club, 
you have the Evo Club, um, you have the R34 Club, even the Type R Club as well. And in this club, um, there are multiple splinter cells of uh, enthusiasts. And uh, these are what makes up our car community. So, um, for these are what represents the makeup of our car community. And often during drives, you will see groups of these uh, affiliations driving together for convoys, for track days, uh, even for simple drive and meet or typically our coffee and chats drive. How does one connect? Um, well, most of these clubs are active on uh, WhatsApp channels and also on Facebook. Uh, Predominantly, uh, the car clubs were previously found in uh, internet forums, but uh, that mode of communication is probably a bit outdated in recent years. So um, I'd say WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp chat groups, um, uh, you'll be able to spot them also largely in Facebook groups as well. And you could always uh, connect with them and uh, see if there are similar like-minded people with an affinity for the same type of drives that you'd like. And that's what makes up our community. What's been my favorite car to drive so far on Malaysian roads? Uh, uh, one on track and one on the road. Um, really really too many to draw a single conclusion but I think the McLarens had a certain appeal to me uh, driving along two gay roads uh, I had the privilege of uh, driving a 675 LT uh, spider up along the roads here and uh, the combination of the vehicles handling the exhaust note uh, going through the open cabin and also to be able to see the large air brake behind just move vertically up and down um, uh, providing additional braking I think it, it was quite exceptional um, so far I haven't had an experience that exceeded that uh, although I do love uh, driving the Speciale as well um, and for Stuttgart's uh, finest, um, I'm a huge fan of the uh, Porsche GT3. Um, I, I love it. I, I love it much more than even the, the RS, which is, uh, well, to put it in a more politi politically correct tone, it's a very, it, it's an extremely track focused car. Um, whereas for the GT3, uh, it, it was um, comfortable and could work along the undulations of the roads um, and had even experienced it uh, having driven the GT3 for a short period of time as a daily as well. Um, and I think it's, it's rather special. For track cars, uh, I was a couple of years ago, uh, a good friend of mine, Kenji, he took me out in his 1,000 over horsepower GTR R35. Uh, that's, a, that's a HKS show car. It's got pretty much every bell and whistle you could ever have from the HKS catalog. And uh, that car was absolutely, absolutely insane. Um, Flying through turn 11 and 12, I could uh, feel certain parts of my body lift from one side to the other, uh, almost like a, a virtual hernia, so to speak. Um, but uh, it was quite an experience. Um, of course, he's a very capable driver. Uh, and sitting in a car, you get to experience how engineered this car is. 
here we are reaching the uh, end of the uh, roadblock. What's my dream car? <laughs> this is a uh, this is a very loaded question. Um, one is uh, well because my wife will be watching this vlog as well, so I don't want to shoot myself in the foot. Uh, I, I I don't know really how to start with this. Um, I love many cars and, and I've got a. I've got an existing list of cars that I, that's on my bucket list, that I'd like or I don't want, but the problem is the list grows significantly longer every year, and uh, being in my line of work for, for, for over 17 years, uh, it doesn't help that you get to experience many cars and enjoy working on them and uh, getting to learn the intricacies of each. So I, I don't have a specific dream car. I have many, many, many dream cars, um, but don't have the budget to go for many, many dream cars, so it's usually a car at a time. Um, but for a general understanding, I, 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 I lean more towards more traditional, more analog cars, cars that are, you could say, older, um, because I enjoy the profound character of the car. I feel it is something that you can experience, um, you can hear it. It's a, it's a very different driving experience comparatively. And uh, that's why I love analog cars. Uh, right now I'm driving my Z4. Uh, it's a BMW uh, with a straight six. Um, I, I love the character note of the engine. Um, it doesn't shift anywhere as quickly, the transmission as uh, a DCT, um, but I, I enjoy how things work at a different pace. I, I also like, uh, I enjoy the hypercars, I enjoy supercars, I enjoy a Ferrari as much as I do a Porsche. Um, although admittedly, I, I have a particular fondness for Porsches. Um, I, I've always been a fan because uh, it's extremely well engineered and it's what I consider to be the perfect daily supercar. Um, you could easily uh, get into a 911, go down for a drive along Tuge Road or to Crack and the next day go back to the office. I think that's it for today's vlog. Thank you for joining us. Uh, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and we'll see you for more content in the next one. I'm Darren signing out. Stay safe.